Here are the principal formulas used to calculate friction loss. It is possible to calculate the friction head loss for any fluid of known viscosity, for any velocity, any pipe diameter, and any pipe roughness. The formula that assembles all these factors is the darcy weisbach formula. The second is the Reynolds number, which tells us if the flow regime is turbulent or laminar, or somewhere in between. If you inject a dye into a flow stream in the laminar regime, the dye particles will remain close together as they go down the stream. If the flow is turbulent, the dye particles immediately disperse throughout the cross-section of the pipe. The third one is the Colebrook equation, which is the heart of the matter. It tells us what the friction factor is depending on the roughness of the pipe, the Reynolds number, and the pipe diameter. The fourth is the friction factor for a laminar flow condition, which occurs at very low fluid velocities or flows with high viscosity fluids. Let's take a look at each one in turn and put some typical numbers in to get results. The first thing we notice is that the result of the calculation on the right hand side is non-dimensional. All the units will cancel out and F is non-dimensional. The term V squared over 2G is the velocity head, which is the amount of energy that corresponds to the movement of the liquid. L is the pipe length and D the pipe diameter. L over D is a ratio of two important characteristics of the system. Let's put in 10 feet per second for V, 0.03 for F, and 0.464 for D. These values are the ones used in the previous pump and process video. The result is 156 feet per 100 feet of friction head loss. The Reynolds number is a ratio of the forces related to inertia and viscosity. A large Reynolds number means that the velocity is high and the viscosity is low. A low Reynolds number means the inverse. The range of Reynolds numbers is so great that it has to be shown on a logarithmic scale, such as in the Moody diagram. Viscosity is a critical factor in the Reynolds number. It was first defined by Newton as the ratio between stress and strain, equivalent to shear over displacement of fluid layers. A fluid with a constant or linear relationship between stress and strain is known as a Newtonian fluid. The Colebrook equation is the heart of the friction calculation and is based on empirical data. The graphical representation of the Colebrook equation is the Moody diagram. Before the days of programmable calculators, this would be the only practical way to calculate the friction factor F. We will get to the Moody diagram shortly. Again, before the days of personal computers, a solution to the Colebrook equation was difficult to attain, so a replacement for it was devised called the Swami-Jane formula, for which F can be calculated directly. The results are accurate to within 10% of the Colebrook equation. The laminar flow equation gives the friction parameter for laminar flow. Laminar flow occurs for Reynolds numbers less than 2,000. Between 2,000 and 4,000, the flow is unstable and 4,000 and up is the turbulent region. Laminar flow is characterized by the formation of fluid layers as the name indicates. The friction occurs between the layers that are moving at different velocities. There is no friction with the boundary wall, at least in the roughness ranges that we are accustomed to in pipe. The friction factor F cannot be determined directly from the Colebrook equation, and an iterative method must be used, such as an algorithm that will converge an initial estimate for F to an accurate solution. The newton raphson iteration technique is a very good example of this. I will attach the derivation of the equations to use to apply the newton raphson iteration technique with the sketches for this presentation. The Moody diagram is the graphical representation of the Colebrook equation and the laminar equation. This diagram is mostly used to find the friction factor in the turbulent regime as the laminar flow equation is easy to use. The right-hand vertical axis of the Moody diagram is the surface roughness epsilon divided by the diameter, and the bottom x-axis is the Reynolds number. You'll notice that as the Reynolds number increases, the lines get flat. This means that the friction parameter becomes dependent on the pipe roughness and not the Reynolds number. This is a transition zone known as complete turbulence. This means that the first term within the brackets of the Colebrook equation is predominant. At lower Reynolds numbers, the effect of the surface roughness is less and the second term is more predominant. This is a smooth pipe zone. Here are some typical pipe roughness values. 
This last formula is the relationship between absolute or dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity. Sometimes you may find the viscosity of a liquid in one form or another and you will need to convert. Also, here is the definition of specific gravity. I will include a link below the video to the presentation sketches as well as an Excel spreadsheet that will allow you to calculate the friction factor with the Colebrook equation as well as the Swami-Jane equation.